Hello everybody, so I am back with yet another Airflow Box test, and this time we've got my Ricar R10 Premium. This is the super light. And I have two machines sitting with it here. I have my uh, Simplicity Freedom over here, also the premium version. Uh, basically the same machine as this, um, but I'm just testing this Ricard since I restored it just about a week ago and haven't used it since. So it's in tip-top shape where the Simplicity I have been using. And then the other machine I have is my Auric XL21. And obviously that machine, when I tested it on high with a bag in, if you remember from the hold peak calibration video, it got 99 CFM, a very good performance. But I'm very interested to see, will the super light, I guess it'll be close, but I'm not sure if it'll beat it how, by how much or if it'll be a little bit short of where the XL21 was. Um, as you can see, I have my bags that I'm using set up right here, leaning up against the super light. Um, they're genuine Ricar HEPA bags. They have the uh, green collar, as you can see right there. Um, but a brand new clean HEPA bag in there. And as I said, this machine has been totally restored and cleaned. Um, the commutator uh, has been cleaned. The carbon brushes have been seated. Bearings didn't need any work because this machine is from 2016. I dated it, so obviously it doesn't need new bearings. But let's go ahead and get started. Our first measurement will be on low with a bag in. And away we go. <laughs> So 71.25 CFM. Now, if I remember correctly, the Auric was above 80 on low. So perhaps this does not bode well for the Ricard actually beating the Auric on high speed. But 71.25 CFM on low speed. And let's go ahead and switch to high. If you remember, the Auric XL21 got 99 CFM. So let's see what this Ricard can do. <laughs> So at 97.21 CFM, it fell a little bit short of the Auric, less than 2 CFM short. But really, this R10P and this Auric XL21 are neck and neck, almost exactly the same. Obviously, the Ricard uh, is lower CFM on low speed than the Auric, but in terms of high speed with the bag in, these machines are almost equal. In fact, measurement error could probably, you could probably say definitely that they are equal. So, now that we've done low and high with the bag in, let's go ahead and take this HEPA bag out and see what the R10 will do. Okay, so the bag is out. And you can see I did set the HEPA bag there that I'm using just for my records. But let's just reset the anemometer here. There we go, and back to low speed, no bag. <laughs>
Okay, so 73.06, so that's less than a 2 CFM increase from where we were um, with the bag in. So definitely that HEPA bag is uh, filtering very efficiently. Less than 2 CFM is a very good number. And then let's see, this will be probably the highest one we measure, but high speed with no bag in. Here we go. <laughs> Seventy-eight point seven three for our top end measurement. So still a little bit short of the XL twenty-one, um, but again, just a sm a really small CFM increase from uh, taking out that bag. So it's definitely not the bag's fault. But this machine, it's all over a hundred CFM, really close. Uh, you know, ninety-five to ninety-eight in that range, and then obviously just above seventy on low speed. Um, so it makes me wonder if it may do a little bit better than the Auric on hardwood floors since the low speed is quite a bit lower. Um, but we will do some suction tests as well as brush roll speed tests to compare it to the XL21. Let's go ahead and get set up for a suction test. Okay, so we're all set up for a suction test. Got my suction gauge here and let's start out on low speed to see where we're at. <laughs> sure I saw 16 or 17 inches of lift but I'll put that live in the video once I can review the footage and then now let's do high speed <laughs> or 25 inches of lift. So pretty low uh, suction numbers as we expected for this direct air machine, but this obviously has killer airflow numbers. So for our final test, let's do a brush roll speed test on high and low speed. Okay, so the uh, super light has fallen over here. So we can do a brush roll speed test, but this is gonna be pretty difficult because you can see like most for cars, this brush roll is incredibly shiny. This lovely aluminum brush roll. And there's our piece of tape. Now it looks, the piece of tape looks pretty different, um, but the brush roll is so shiny, uh, the uh, laser from the tachometer is probably gonna struggle quite a bit with reflecting. Now, I have found a way that I can kind of tilt this in a certain direction to get a reasonable measurement that's not like 20,000 RPM or something because it's it's not reading any interruption. Um, but I'm gonna have to adjust the camera and then we can get started with measurements on low and high speed. Okay, so here we go, starting on low speed. <laughs> special arrangement there this was jumping around quite a bit um, but I'm gonna call it at around 4940 or so that's 
seems to be the most consistent I can, measurement I can get both on camera and off camera. So 4940 in low speed. And then let's do one more measurement in high speed. <laughs> jumping around but after multiple tests the most consistent number I can seem to get is about 6720 rpm so that's definitely a very fast brush roll in there indeed on high speed but 6720 rpm is what we're going to call it for the brush roll speed and then now let's go ahead and take a quick look at all the different measurements we collected for this super light premium so as you can see from the uh, airflow measurements starting off in that column first, um, on high speed, uh, as I mentioned in the video, the R10P really close to 100, you know, 97 to 90, almost 99 CFM with the bag out. Um, so very close to what the XL21 got. In fact, these machines are pretty much equal on high speed in terms of airflow. But what's interesting is while the Auric is around 83 or so on low speed, um, the Recar is pretty significantly less than that, around 71 to 73, so a good 10 CFM less. Um, so it possibly, it does have less airflow in low speed, um, but the brush roll does spin faster in low speed than the XL21s did. Moving over to CFM density, you can see, especially on high speed, it's incredibly high. Uh, over a 5 is very high. However, this machine is so light um, and it has so many cutouts in the base plate, I haven't really ever had any issues with pushing this, even on very thick carpet. So it has very high CFM density, yes, but it cleans very well. And because the machine is so light and the brush roll tugs through the carpet and it has very large cutouts, on the base plate. It's really not too hard to push through any sort of carpet whatsoever. And then of course with it being a direct air machine the watts per CFM is very efficient obviously. Interestingly the efficiency does seem to increase in other words, it becomes more efficient on low speed, only about 4.44 watts per CFM on low speed compared to 5.76 watts per CFM. But still, a very environmentally friendly machine it does not use a lot of power at all to make the airflow, and it cleans very well, obviously. Um, and then you can see on the bottom there, uh, the two brush roll speeds I was finally able to get. It's very difficult to measure because you saw the brush roll being so shiny, it just the reflection of the laser right back to the tachometer makes it difficult for it to read the interruption but I think eventually we got two reliable measurements of 6700 on high and 4940 on low. Now 6700 on high is the fastest brush roll speed I've ever measured on any machine. Keep in mind that the XL21 when I tested it was right around 5600 RPM on high. So this is significantly over a thousand RPM more than that. So this definitely agitates the carpet very well. And as I mentioned, it definitely makes this machine easier to push with its high CFM density because the brush roll is tugging through the carpet. Um, and then finally you can see that over there it's a standard direct air machine, but the nozzle suction is actually quite a bit more than the auric. Um, correcting my auric measurements for that my suction gauge was miscalibrated, um, it was around 14 inches on high, so it definitely uh, appears to have a little bit more suction than the auric, so it has a, a better seal in there compared to the auric with all the felt gaskets and everything, so that's also interesting. 
But overall, some excellent measurements from the Superlay R10P. Um, by popular request, I am going to be doing a tour of my vacuum collection video next. I should have that. I'm going to do the filming this weekend and hopefully should have it uploaded sometime soon. Um, but I'm going to go through each brand and uh, go through all the different categories of my collection and show you every single machine there. Um, and I do sincerely apologize for the lack of uploading last week. I had several exams and uh, I didn't have any time between all the studying and everything. I didn't have time to edit or upload footage, um, but rest assured that weekly uploading and hopefully more often weekly uploading will return. So keep uh, looking out for videos and definitely be sure to like this video and click subscribe down below as well as ring the bell uh, so you get notified when I post a new video of a test. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you again in the next one.